detailing the terms of the new pack. Conference realignment and expansion is always in the news, so we're back on the big mountain to keep you updated. Hey, great to have you back here on the mountain. Last week, we learned that ABC 10 in Sacramento mm -hmm. uh, got a copy of the term sheet, the agreement between the four pack members. This was before Utah State had joined, uh, but the four pack, I'm sorry, the four Mountain West members before Utah State had joined and the two pack members. Uh, so I want to go over some of the details of this. I know some of this has already gotten out, obviously. Some pieces I wanted to make sure we talk about. Then just give a, a few opinions uh, of mine because that's what we do on the Big Mountain. We give our opinions. So the term sheet was signed on September 11th, again, by the two current Pac-12 members and the four new Pac-12 members, that being Colorado State, San Diego State, Boise State, and Fresno State. Within 30 days of September 11th, the execution of this term sheet agreement, the Pac-12 was to prepare a long-term agreement reflecting the membership terms. And we'll get into some of those terms here in a minute. The long form will include the expansion agreements, which will include, number one, the governance, economic, and some other terms that will apply to the new members prior to and following admission of them to the PAC. Number two, expansion consent agreements. And number three, a grant of rights agreement for a five-year term that is to begin July 1st, 2026. Following the execution of this agreement, the Mountain West members will provide the Mountain West a written notice of withdrawal. So that is the long form agreement. I'll get back to that in a minute because that answers a question that I have been asking for a little while now. Uh, upon the execution of this long-term agreement and until such, uh, I'm sorry, of this term sheet and until as such long uh, form agreements are executed, the agreement shall be binding uh, except for Washington State because they need to have their board of regents actually approve this agreement. So this term sheet, according to this, is binding. It stipulates that the PAC-12 will not provide contributions towards new Mountain West member distributions or their exit fees and they won't be and will not be responsible for any amounts owed to the Mountain West. So again, to be clear, at least for these four members, the PAC is not paying the exit fees of uh, those four to the Mountain West. We know that to be about 17 million dollars uh, through the bylaws. So they then go through the different exhibits, which is the actual terms and conditions that will get put into this long form agreement. The grant of rights will be a five year agreement. So it'll run through June 1st of 2031. In terms of withdrawal, uh, there's no def definition of a member or how you lose or how you withdraw other than to say like you lose your board status. So we'll <coughs> see what comes out of a long-term agreement because one would hope they have learned, the PAC has learned, when you're not very specific, you get into court. And that's what happened to them a year ago. It was not specific at all in terms of withdrawal. Um, in terms of an A4 withdrawal, so if, if a member chooses to go to an A4 conference, and this is at least one year notice is given, one year or more notice is given, liquidated damages of two times the school's Pac-12's distribution for the preceding year will be what they have to pay in order to leave. If there's a non-A4 withdrawal, specifically it says schools cannot leave, which is odd because they can. That's that whole antitrust thing, Steve. Um, but anyway, schools cannot leave. But if they were to do this, they, it's actually three times the distribution of the school's payout from the pack. If it's less than that year, it's actually double that. So it would be six times if you're going to a non-A4 conference. In terms of the interim period, so that's the period from basically the execution of the long-term uh, agreement until July 1st of 26. It says schools will obtain the necessary board approvals prior to signing the long form agreement <coughs> and the grant of rights. Schools can revoke their election to join this new PAC 
if they receive an A for invite, but they have to pay liquidated damages of $30 million. So that is from basically now, October-ish, until July 1st of 26. If a school does not become a member on July 1st, 26, they would owe liquidated damages of $40 million. I want to bring that back up here in a moment. So I just want to be, be clear, though, because I heard, saw a little bit of different reporting on this. I heard that, like, the, the liquidated damages to get out of the pack is $30 million. No, we already went over what it is under the new pack, how to get out. This $30 and $40 million is in the interim period only, from now until the, the league begins or the new members begin in uh, July of 26. So in terms of revenue sharing, members will retain 50% of the net revenue for college football playoffs and the NCAA basketball tournament participation, the other 50% will get distributed <coughs> equally to all other members. Uh, in terms of the Pac-12 Enterprises, which is the Pac-12 network, they've rebranded that, they call it the Enterprises now. Um, that is a conference asset and the parties, the new parties will negotiate how the ownership and control uh, will happen here with the new pack. So right now it's Oregon State and Washington State that have full control over the enterprise. They need to negotiate going forward what that's going to look like. In terms of governance, and we heard some of this moving forward, the new members, they're going to be included in, in some of the governance here over the next two years. So a media deal that's, that's agreed to prior to July 1st must have three force approval of the new and existing members. In terms of adding a new member, there must be two-thirds approval in order to do that. A few other points here, Steve, and now I'm going to get into my opinions. So, um, you know, anytime you hear these liquidated damages, which we talked about several times, we talked about how do you get out of the pack and then in the interim period, you know, liquidated damages can always be fought in court. It's the same liquidated damages that the pack is arguing about. Uh, with the scheduling agreement. It's the same liquidated damages that the AC or the FSU is arguing the ACC has. Uh, and people say, well, they're two different contracts. It's two different things. They're using the same word, liquidated damages. And we've talked about, you know, if the liquidated damages are not based behind losses, they can potentially be deemed unenforceable um, and just uh, arbitrary numbers. And so that's why I say they're the same. I get it. They're all three different contracts. They're arguing about three different things. But the $30 million and the $40 million that we talked about in the interim as liquidated damages, to me, that's not backed up in factual losses. So is that potentially something that can be taken to court? 100% it can be. Just like exit fees. You know, is it $17 million right now with the Mountain West? <coughs> is that backed up by something or is it called a liquidated damage? Oh, that may end up in court. It's all, they all could end up in court. When I, at this point, when I hear liquidated damages, I go, that sounds like it's going to go to court. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about right now. So I, want, I just wanted to bring that up. The other one was uh, the Mountain West, if you remember, has included a free exit fee if any school gets an invite to an A4. So different here with the PAC. The PAC is saying, no, you still have to pay us. The Mountain West with their MOU that they have, they're saying that, hey, if you get an A4 invite, you don't owe us any exit fees. You can go free of charge. So pretty substantial difference there. Um, and then the other thing I just want to say is, like I said earlier, this kind of answers the questions in terms of whether or not these Mountain West members have actually issued their withdrawal notice. And it is specified in the bylaws what that is. It has to be a written notice and they have to make a $5,000 payment. So as of right now in this interim period, that hasn't happened. It actually says here, when you after you sign the long form, form yep. then you must actually withdraw from the Mountain West Conference. So that answers my question. They haven't withdrawn from the Mountain West, technically haven't withdrawn from the Mountain West Conference yet. So those are the things that I kind of gleaned out of this, learned from this. What are your thoughts, Steve? Well, I, I think I've become a bit of a, a skeptic since over the last year, starting with our coverage of the, the original PAC breakdown and fallout, followed by the Florida State and Clemson ACC cases, yes. then the PAC and Mountain West issues. Um, so to me, and I agree with some of the things you said there, and, and first of all, these MOUs, in my opinion, are not worth the paper they're written on. <laughs> um, and they basically state that in here that no, like really none of this 
uh, until they have the long form contracts. I mean, they say this is binding, but right. again, I can say anything is binding. Yes. It can um, all be taken to court. Yes, hundred percent. And I remember when the the Big Ten originally came up with their contract with their media partners. Nothing. The long form contracts hadn't been signed. They came up with an initial agreement, and when they got into long form contracts, that's when you get down the details. The the, the lawyers go to work, yep. and there were things that that basically could have blown that deal up at the last minute. But, you know, they worked through them because it was such a big amount of money. No one wanted to walk away from the deal. But until you get those long-form contracts signed, there's really, you know, to me, it's it's nothing. It's just a, uh, like, okay, maybe we're, we're, we're dating. We're not married yet. To right, right. Kind of thing. Uh, and then the other thing, like, exactly what you said, what, what I was going to say, when I see these liquidated damages after everything that's happened, right. you have to be able to back them up. Like, yeah. I, I could put in a contract and, and you and me and 50 other people could agree that we're going to join a club and the penalty for withdrawing from that club is 50 Google Plex million jillion dollars. Right. And that's just, it's just funny money. It's just yes. made up unless you can show what are the damages. And so we saw in the ACC, they tried to use operational budget here. Yeah. I think they, in this case, they're using distribution, yes. um, you know, revenue distributions. Uh, but then when they just throw out 30 and $40 million, those are just made up. Like Completely arbitrary. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, I just, you know, I don't put a lot of stock in it yet. I think there's a lot of stuff to go on. And I think they're very, they're, they're all being very careful of what they are committing to contractually obligated to. Right. Um, that's kind of my other thought, but it just, and again, I, I feel like I'm being a little just skeptical or maybe overly skeptical, but I like, this is just as as many lawyers have told me a contract is the and this we don't even have a contract this is right. a memorandum of understanding right but even when you have a contract it's just the first step in the negotiation uh when you want to sue later and break that contract well that, that that's a great point when you bring up mru they're calling this a term sheet mm -hmm. and they're going to get to the long form yeah well that's exactly what in my opinion the the mountain west is doing right now they have an mou yeah a term sheet a what we've agreed to and we're going to get to the long form agreement end of grant of rights they're both saying they're going to get to a grant of rights yeah. they're not done yet and i've had people ask me is it binding is it not binding uh, you know, it, it, it can be and it can't be. It depends yeah. on if you want to challenge it, and then you take the damn thing to court. Yeah. But I can tell you, to your point, the 30 and $40 million that have been thrown out are arbitrary numbers. Right. Uh, they're not backed in anything. The exit fees that they talked about are backed in something, and that's that's a, a bit of the rub yeah. with the um, scheduling agreement and the amount of the money that the PAC is to pay the Mountain West. What are those numbers backed up by? What is that $55 million for five schools <clears throat> is that backed up by? And that can be a bit of the rub. The whole antitrust thing, I, I, I'm not buying it. A lot of people aren't buying it. Yeah, I've heard some people talk. Uh, I know there was, uh, I think it was on the Joe or some Joe Beaver or something like that had a guy on. And, and, and he basically was like, here was his three main reasons why he said they did they did the antitrust. And I'm, I'm going a little bit off of this yeah. into the, into the um, issue they're having or the, 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 weeds the case, the yeah. case with, the, with the Mountain West. But it was, number one was, they wanted it to be federal for some reason. Like, so to make it antitrust, yes. you can get into a federal court. Now, he didn't have a good reason why they wanted it to be, but he's like, if they wanted it federal, that's how they can get it federal. Which we talked okay. about that with the Florida State ACC case. Yes, yeah, so he said that was one way. Another way was just, or another reason was that they, you know, they want to show their their muscles and they're not a, afraid to litigate things. And I'm like, oh, you're stretching if that's the reason they did it. And number three, which of course is the reason, is because they want to get to a settlement. They want a lower number than $55 million. But there's really, I mean, that was his reasoning why they brought antitrust in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, those aren't really good reasons why you would bring antitrust in. That, had, that doesn't have anything to do with the unenforceability of the penalties, which lawyers do agree that there could be something there right. with that. But that's different than the antitrust piece. So I just bring that in to say... Anything can get litigated, mm -hmm. liquidated. When I hear this word liquidated damages, I'm like, oh gosh, you you get an attorney, they're gonna fight that sucker. If you want to take it to court and spend hundreds of millions and blah blah, well, you better be able to back up hundreds those of those. You better back them up, and that's why the exit fees are backed up, but these aren't. So for the people that asked me, is the MOU binding? I would say it's no. In my opinion, it's no more or less binding than what the PAC is doing right now. This short for form, they haven't done a long form, they haven't signed it. Call it a term sheet, call it an MOU, call it whatever you want to. Uh, they've all been signed, but 
I con you know, as we say, contracts are made to uh, either broken. be broken or be litigated for the crying yep. out loud. So, okay, I got one more point, JY. Okay. So, there's been a lot of talk where the pack was negotiating with the, with other teams. There was yes. a lot of talk about UNLV and how UNLV said this wasn't a good deal for us. Mm -hmm. Memphis said this wasn't a good deal for us. Neither one of those schools said that we don't have interest. We're not interested. They said it's not a good deal for us. Right. What we see in here, what they are willing to be contractually obligated to, and it says right in there, they're not willing to be contractually obligated to pay those exit fees and right. penalties and stuff. Now, could they have some other offers, some side offers, handshake deals? Maybe. But they're putting it pretty clear in here that they're not obligated um, to that. So that might be a big part of, you know, we, we, we kind of question the deals that they were offering to these right. different schools. So when I see that, I say, oh, that makes sense. Because if, if I'm joining an agreement and you're telling me you are not going to put it in writing, right. that you're going to help me out with these exit fees or penalties at all, you know, maybe you're saying, oh, we'll help you out a little bit on the side, but you're not willing to put it in writing. Then to me, if I'm doing my fiduciary duties to my school, which that's something we talked about it a lot, I would be very hesitant to, you know, enter into one of those agreements, uh, especially if they're telling me it's a it's a side deal, it's a handshake deal. We may give you this money, we give, may give you this help, but we're not going to put it in the contract. Well, let me take that one step further, because we know the the pack has said they're putting sixty five million aside. They've said this for a long, long time. Uh, for rebuilding the pack. They had 65 million in their pot, right? Uh, and we know right now, 55 of that is going towards the Mountain West, yep. it, assuming they don't settle or they don't get the amount reduced, yada, yada, yada. So they have 10 left over. What we have been told, now I don't know this to be a fact, but the rumors are that they offered $2.5 million to the three AAC schools. Mm -hmm. Also, they've offered $2.5 million to help cover USU's fees. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? If I take four times two and a half, there's your 10 million yeah. bucks. Yep. So we just spent your 65 mm -hmm. pack. And, and and for those that have this war chest, they want to talk about it. <coughs> We've known the 65. They're trying to get money out of that 55 because they can only offer two and a half to four more schools. Yep. And that's all they got left. Yep. So, I mean, I'm doing back of the napkin math right now, but that seems to make a heck of a lot of sense to me. It does. And it's, and really, it's not a ton of money. For, it's not. Especially, you know, we talked about UNLV and how they have some debt. They have some financial problems. Doesn't make a lot of financial sense to them. And if you're like Memphis and these other schools, if, if I'm thinking I might be able to get an invite to the ACC or the PAC, which is the better, well, you're only giving me two and a half million dollars to like that. That's, that's just not a lot of money. It's not, and I think the hope is they're going to market now so that their market's going to be so much higher than what they're even estimating, or at least on the high end of what they're estimating, instead of bringing more money, instead of taking that two and a half to five or $10 million to help out, they're going to dangle the carrot of, Revenue. you get two and a half, but hey, our media yeah. value is going to be 10 times what, I think that's kind of their next hope, and that's why they're now going to the market, or wanting to go to the market, yeah. because they want to prove, hopefully, to new members that they will have this increase because they don't have the money to give them for their exit fee. Yes, makes a lot so of sense. That's where I think maybe they're at. But hey, we're speculating. So hey, with that, one to break down this agreement. One to, of course, get into some opinions. It's been a while since we talked about the pack because we have too much Mountain West stuff we have to talk about right now. So with that, hey, make sure you give this a like and subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you guys next time on the Big Mountain.